Hey everybody, Mr. Piercy here, and what we're going to be looking at today are a couple of uh, shortcuts to show when triangles are congruent to each other. Uh, we have two types of uh, congruence postulates here, uh, where we're saying, uh, now here I say postulate, but I also uh, will often refer to them as a conjecture or a theorem. Uh, personally, to me, uh, the ones that we have here are more theorems than they are postulates because they don't seem quite as intuitive. Uh, for me to be able to use to say, oh, hey, if these things are the same, then these triangles also must be the same. So real quick, uh, just a side note, you've seen in the past uh, when we were talking about logic uh, in, in previous lessons, when we introduced the idea of proofs, I told you there were three types of proofs. There was two column proofs, paragraph proofs, and flowchart proofs. Uh, Two column proofs are usually going to be my go-to thing uh, as far as if I have to do a proof because I can use sentence fragments and I can abbreviate and I can use symbols to represent words, whereas in a paragraph proof I, f I still feel the need to use proper uh, sentence structure, grammar, uh, punctuation, all of that stuff. So here you see an example of what a flowchart proof, but essentially they have the same structure as a two column proof, they're just laid out differently instead of having literally two columns, we say we have a statement, then a reason, a statement, and the reason where uh, here what you see in the bubbles or in the boxes, this is the statement that we would see in a two column proof and something that's kind of underneath it and sometimes they have a line uh, there, that would be our reason. So that's what a two column proof is. But let's get back to angle side angle and angle angle side. Uh, here, these are parts of triangles that we can use to prove when triangles are going to be congruent to each other. And if you want to see why they work that way, there's a supplemental video I made uh, that demonstrates how this stuff works. So here, angle side angle says that the side we're looking at must be included in between uh, a pair of angles. And if it's not, uh, we, we wouldn't call it angle side angle. So here we're looking at angle A being congruent to angle D, AC being congruent to DF, and C being congruent to F. So then we can say that the triangles would be congruent. So if I have that uh, set of parts from one triangle to another, we are able to make the claim that triangles will be congruent to each other. So the second one, angle, angle, side. Here, uh, angle, angle, side is going to allow us also to show triangles are congruent to each other, where here you see the side is not included in between the two angles. So out of the things that we've talked about so far, we've seen uh, side, 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 that works. We've seen side, angle, side, that works. Uh, we've seen now angle side angle where I have a side in between two angles that works and I have angle angle side and that one also works now some of you may be wondering well why does angle angle side work but side side angle why does that not work uh, and and again I would show, I would encourage you to watch the uh, the video that I showed you uh, where where it came from uh, in the post with the uh, uh, in the classroom with this assignment. Uh, and another thing that won't work either, angle, angle, angle. Angle, angle, angle doesn't show uh, congruency. It only shows similarity. So real quick, let me just uh, grab a triangle here. So here I have a triangle, and now I'm going to copy this triangle so you know it's the Oops, let me clone that triangle so I know they're, they're the exact same thing. So let me just, uh, let me see, I want to give it some kind of color here. So fill, solid fill, and let's go ahead and give it uh, some color. Okay, so now I can take this triangle and I can make it bigger. So if I compare, and no, you can't really see too well. Let's bring that one to the front. And 
let's fill that one in too. So let's go there. All right. So now the triangles, you can see, if I compare the angles, you can see that they are identical to each other. Uh, but clearly the triangles themselves are not. So angle, angle, angle doesn't show triangles to be congruent to each other. It can show that they're similar, but not congruent. So here, again, we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. So if A and D are the same, C and F are the same, and uh, BC and EF are the same, we will be able to say that the triangles must be congruent to each other because uh, when we actually construct triangles using those parts, it's physically not possible to create triangles that aren't the same. So again, I encourage you to watch the uh, constructions video, the demonstration that I made uh, to help you understand that. But for the time being, let's go ahead and uh, start practicing these things here. So here are types of uh, examples that you might want to, you know, that you might see on your assignments where uh, we're giving you a picture and we're saying, is there enough information to show that we have triangles congruent to each other or not? Now, before you try to read the solutions and see what they are, let's just look at the pictures. Uh, looking at the pictures, we have uh, on A, we have two sets of corresponding angles uh, that are congruent. So I have something here and here, I have something here and something here, and we can say my vertical angles here are the same, uh, but we don't know anything about the sides. So even though the triangles do look like they are created to where they're going to be congruent to each other, without having at least one side to, to use, we're not able to say that we could show those that those are congruent to each other. So on B, we have, again, we have a pair of angles here, we have a pair of angles here, and the side that is shared between them uh, obviously must be congruent. So even though it's not marked congruent, according to the reflexive property of congruence, uh, anything that's shared between two figures must be the same in both figures. So I have uh, two angles and a side that's not included in between them, so that looks like here uh, we could use angle, angle, side on this one. So here... Uh, we, we can't show that those are congruent to each other. And so now let's look at C. So I have a, an angle here, an angle here, a side, a side. And here, even though, again, they're not marked, vertical angles are always congruent to each other. So in this case, it looks like we're going to be able to say angle, side, angle, because the side is in between the vertical angle pair and the uh, angles with the single arc that were marked for us. So think about how you can look at a figure and see, well, even if something isn't necessarily given to me, can we see, can, can we, based on some prior knowledge, like sides being shared between something, the vertical angles, can we identify, is there actually enough information here? So in this case, because for uh, figure A, there are no sides, we marked congruent and we can't figure out if anything is the same. Uh, unfortunately, we can't say that there's, there's not enough information on that one. On B, we do have a non-included side, so we can say that those are congruent by angle, angle, side. And on C, we do have a pair of vertical angles, and it is, uh, the side is included in between them, so we can say angle, side, angle on that one. So here, uh, again, this is where I want you guys to uh, pause the video, see, can you determine whether the triangles are congruent to each other? And if you can, tell me why. Uh, so go ahead and answer these questions when you're ready. Hit play and come back and see how you how you did against uh, compared to my answers. Okay, so hopefully you have an answer here, and and what you say uh, hopefully will match what I said. Now, the way that I'm presenting my answers is in the form of a, a proof, a two-column proof. So if you wrote yours out as a statement you know, where you just said yes and you marked your stuff on your diagram, uh, keep in mind that we are going to be doing proofs uh, quite a bit in this unit, so that's why I'm doing these as proofs here. So looking at uh, the figure here, uh, let's pick a color. Uh, I think blue will work fine. So we have this side here. Let's do this blue triangle. And 
Now let's do a red triangle here. So looking at the figures, we want to show are the triangles congruent to each other? Well, I have uh, in the blue triangle and in the red triangle, I have an angle here, a 90 degree angle here, and this side, TW, is shared between both of the figures. Well, on the blue triangle, I have the same stuff. Here at S, I have a 60 degree angle. Here at T, I have a 90 degree angle. So that looks like I'm going to try and show that those are congruent by angle, angle, side. And that's exactly what I said here. And looking at two, is there enough information to show that they're congruent to each other? Again, yes, there is. Uh, on this one, we have a right angle here, a right angle here. We have whatever this angle is with whatever this angle is. They're the same because they have a single hash mark. And the side shared between the triangles is the same. So on this one, we have an angle, a side, and an angle. So we have a side included in between a pair of angles. So that's uh, how I'm going to say that one. And this is obvious. Oops. Here, this is a typo. Here I'm saying angle, side, angle. OK, so let's move on. Now here's a flowchart proof, and I am not a big fan of flowchart proofs. I, I've just never been uh, comfortable with the way that uh, their their variability, I guess. Uh, I understand the idea of having variables and math, and, and uh, but I also do like structure. I like things to, to even though I can, you know, try and answer something a different way, meaning I could approach a problem algebraically, I might be able to approach a problem geometrically. Uh, and even of an algebraic or geometric solution, like there might be more than one way. Uh, but when it comes to proofs, I really do like something that has a little bit more structure to it, which is a lot of the reasons why I like a two-column proof. Well, even though a flowchart proof and a two-column proof are pretty much the same, uh, there's a very clear delineation in uh, two-column proofs where you have your statements on one side, your reasons on the other. And you, you, you go from one statement to another, to another, to another. Uh, I, th that's just something that I like. Uh, two column proofs, you can see here, to me, this looks messy. And that's why I, I, I'm not a huge fan of these things. But I digress. I'm getting off on a tangent here. It's not about what I like. It's about, OK, can we do it? And yes, we absolutely can. Now, I'm not going to be insistent that you do a two col or that you do a flow chart proof. Uh, again, I am capable of you know seeing what you're doing so however you want to do a proof two column paragraph or flow chart uh, I'll be fine however you do them okay so looking at the figures here uh, they're telling us that angle one and angle four are the same so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start marking those angle one and angle four are the same CF bisects ACE so CF bisects ACE so I have this angle here and this angle here the same so what we want to do is we want to flowchart proof so that way CF, CBF, let me outline that in a color here. So let's say uh, CBF, we want this one and let's go red, I guess. CBF and CDF, this one here. Okay, how can we show that those triangles are congruent to each other? Well, just looking at the picture, before I even try to do anything on the proof, looking at the picture here, uh, I know CF is obviously shared uh, between, and I don't want to do that in the same color here. CF is obviously shared between the figures, so it's the same in both figures. That's, uh, that's the reflexive property at work. So inside the green triangle and the red triangle, I have at least one side and one angle that are the same. So looking at the figure uh, where angle 1 is and where angle 2 is, those have to be supplementary because they make a straight line. They're a linear pair. Same thing with 3 and 4. So even though they're not telling me 2 and 3 are the same, because 1 and 4 are the same and 2 and 3 are supplementary to the same value, then that means I can conclude that 2 and 3 must be the same because they're supplements of the same angle. So looking at the diagram here, the way I'm going to try and show that they're congruent is I have a side that's not included in between the two angles, so I'm going to try and go angle, angle, side here. 
So let's go ahead and start plugging in stuff on the proof. Take the stuff that's given to you and go ahead and mark that. So here in the middle where it says angle 1 and angle 2 and angle 3 and angle 4, here we're talking about the fact that they're supplementary to each other. And that's the definition of what supplementary is. There are two angles that have a sum of 180 degrees, and I know they have a sum of 180 because they form a straight line. Uh, probably a better term that would have been is that they're a, a linear pair, not necessarily supplementary. So that means 2 has to be congruent to 3 uh, because of here, this is the congruent supplements theorem. Uh, because 2 and 3 are congruent to the same angle, or supplements of the same number, uh, whatever angle 1 and 4 are, they must be congruent to each other. So CF and CF are the same because it's a reflexive property. And of course, ACF and DCF have to be congruent to each other because, well, we bisected them, and that's the definition of what bisecting is. So the triangles have to be congruent by angle, angle side. So now here it's asking you to basically, ooh, excuse me, do the same thing, uh, but show uh, triangle CBF and CDF are the same when CF bisects angle ACE and BFD. So I did write my example here as a flowchart proof, but I want you guys to try and uh, you know come up with your own proof. I don't, and I don't care if you do it as a two-column proof, flowchart proof, or as a paragraph proof. The reasons will be the same. So pause the video and try and answer this problem and see what you come up with. All right. So now here again is my flowchart proof uh, because it did ask you to do a flowchart proof. So this is how I did it. And you can clearly see I tried to give myself a little bit more structure than what the last example gave us. So again, I'm going to start with the given information, the fact that we have something bisecting an angle, uh, and, and I'm starting with those. So then I'm going to say that, well, because I'm bisecting something, we can say that certain angles have to be congruent to each other because that's the definition of what bisecting is. And of course, CF is still the same in both figures, so that's congruent to each other by the reflexive property. And so that means we can say triangle CBF and triangle CDF are congruent by the angle angle, or I'm sorry, the angle side angle uh, congruence postulate. Now, wrapping things up here, they're trying to give us uh, a little bit. What they're trying to do here is, again, give us just a little bit of uh, perspective. Is, well, why, how, why do we need to know this? Uh, they're just trying to say, well, uh, this, while for us it's an academic exercise, there are reasons for how we could do this. Now, the example that they're giving us here isn't the best thing. I think they tried to write this question more to, to make it a little bit more kid-friendly. Uh, one of my, one of my, in my previous uh, life, I was uh, an engineer, and I would use something like this, where you see the two individuals in the diagram, where they're standing a, a certain distance from each other, or something they could just measure it themselves, and something somewhere off in the distance is a figure, and they want to know, well, how could we figure out a way to get there? How could we triangulate? Uh, where that is based on some given information, or how would we be able to use that to create uh, something congruent to it, maybe on the other side or in a different place, whatever. So here they have these two people that they're standing a certain distance from each other. Now, why kids playing, you know, catch the flag, no angle measurements between each other. I don't know, but this, so again, this is why I think of it more as an engineering perspective. If you've ever been on a road trip and you see uh, guys uh, out on the road with you know tripods and measuring devices and stuff, they're they're usually a surveyor of some kind, and and they use angle measurements to try and figure out where things are and uh, how far something is from something else, and congruent triangles and trigonometry and all kinds of stuff that we do in math. Uh, so that's why I was kind of thinking about it like this. But uh, so here, uh, is there enough information to locate the flag? Well, if we know a fixed angle between two people, in this case, and the length of a side that's included between them, well, then, yes, we should be able to because of the angle-side-angle conjecture or postulate. So 
we do have two angles and an included side. So by the angle angle side postulate, uh, we can figure out what the measurement uh, of anything else on that triangle might necessarily be. So that's what we're doing here. And this one, uh, again, just go ahead and pause the video, read the question, what it's asking you to do. It says, so we have these two people on a stage and we have the lights. Well, can the, what would happen if one person moved? Can one of the actors move without requiring the spotlight to move and changing the distance between the other actors? So go think, think about what you come up with and, and when you're ready, hit play and compare your answer to mine. All right, so looking at the triangle, the way that we have it set up is we do have an angle at 40 degrees, we have an angle at 90 degrees, and we have a side that's not included between the angles, so we are looking at something called the angle angle. You know, we are looking at a triangle where we're looking at an angle and angle on the side. So if any of those people, if any of those things change, like if this person here, say this person here, let's say he walks back to here instead, well, the angle here would have to change. Therefore, the angle here would have to change. So if any of these things move, no, you're not going to have the same triangle. You're going to have uh, something else. So the way the triangle is set up right now, we have a unique triangle according to the angle-angle side congruence postulate. So, so if any of those people move or if the lights move for any reason, the triangle is obviously going to change and therefore we're not going to have anything that's congruent to it. So anyway, here we're just, you know, wrapping up the idea again, congruency. Uh, we're looking at corresponding parts of triangles to show that the triangles are congruent. Angle side angle has to have a side included in between to two angles and angle angle side has to have uh, a side coming off of one of the angles. It's not included in between the two of them. So if you have any questions about anything that you've seen in this lesson, make sure you send them to me in the email. Make sure you uh, comment something in the classroom, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, but until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care.